Looking past the favorites, it's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz, a little bit of the walking wounded. I tweaked my back, so if you see me make a strange face, that's a shooting pain in my back. I should be okay to do the podcast. I'm okay to sit for a little bit. Laying down is better. Walking is another issue. So uh, it is what it is. Hopefully, we'll uh, get through this. But if you do see a cringe, that is just a spasm uh, in my back. All right. We, uh, beyond looking past the favorites, I want to talk which QB surprises, and we're getting close to our race for 500. I I need one more subscription as of uh, Sunday night. I need one more to get to 400. We got to find one more to get to 400. And then almost 100 in the month of July, we can easily get to 100 in the month of August to get to 500. So it is the race to 500. Uh, All right, I wanted to do, because we'll be, when it comes down to it, we'll probably concentrate on, you know, the favorites throughout the season. We're not going to concentrate on who's losing. No one wants to hear about who's losing and why, although everyone's playing each other, but we're going to concentrate on who's winning. So that looks to be, you know, like the top seven teams, you know, in the West, Troy, South Alabama, the Cajuns, and Southern Miss. In the East, you know, you could have, you know, App State, Coastal, Marshall, and JMU, right? And then who do you got? And that's kind of what I want to talk about here. Uh, you know, can and some of these is going to be which QB surprises. If a QB surprises, then those teams like a Georgia State and a Darren Granger. Uh, you know, if Darren Granger, I don't know about surprises, but exceeds expectations. You know, if he can bring in like twenty five hundred yards in passing and another five hundred yards in rushing and account for 25 to 30 touchdowns, they're going to be pretty good, right? They're going to, they're going to contend for a spot in the, in the East, or at least, you know, at the worst, be a thorn in the side of some of the better teams. So that's, that's what I want to do now, looking past uh, the favorites. And I guess it's all kind of, it'll be, you know, won't be one big segment, but it'll be two of the same thing. Because, you know, Will Hall and Southern Miss on the other side is, you know, they're looking, they're not Pat, they're not, I guess that's not, I guess they are one of the favorites, but they're like fourth, right? They're just teetering. And a lot of that is going to determine on the quarterbacks. And they have Billy Wiles out of Clemson. And we're going with our lads.com for depth charts, for whatever that's worth. All right. Although I think Will Hall told us at, at Sunbelt Media Days that, you know, it's really between Billy Wiles from Clemson and Holman Edwards, who was at Houston, ended up at uh, East Mississippi Community College, right? Is that last chance you? Uh, and then you have Zach Wilkie, who is going to be behind him. Uh, Wilkie played a little bit too soon for Will Hall's liking so can either of these guys billy wiles and or holman edwards and i was going to say our lads actually has wilkie's second string and edwards third string whereas i think hall thinks that the competition is going to be between wiles and edwards and can one of these guys surprise you know can can you get a billy wiles who had to be something if he's going to be recruited by clemson you know can he get Southern Miss passed the Raging Cajuns, not only on the field, but in the standings. Can Southern Miss, you know, they almost beat uh, South Alabama at home uh, last year. You know, it'll, it will be in Mobile this year, but they were right there with them. They were ahead most of the game, and, you know, South Alabama needed a little bit of dramatics to win that football game. And so those are the things that I want to talk about in this uh, episode. And, you know, the, again, I've said this before. I The two most 
interesting teams in the whole conference are going to be what Texas State and Old Dominion do. That's what I really want to see if you can, you know, change your offense overnight. Texas State doing a bunch of transfers and a new coach. ODU mostly doing with an offensive, new offensive coordinator and new co- new op- uh, new quarterback. Can you do that, right? And so Texas State up and down, up and down last year. Uh, and, you know, can they get solid footing? And can, you know, is it Malik Hornsby or TJ Finley? I think Kev Giardello, he actually came on the radio show on 103.3 The Goat, and he uh, suggested that all – all arrows, he doesn't know one way or the other, all arrows pointing to T.J. Finley due to experience uh, compared to Emily Corn's BF uh, athleticism. All right, so are one of those two Kiwis going to surprise? I mean, we've seen T.J. Finley play pretty well. I mean, he saved Auburn against, was it Georgia State? I think it was Georgia State, right? A couple years ago, coming off the bench. Like, Bo was not playing well, and T.J. Finley saved the day. <laughs> uh, he had his moments at LSU. Kid has a huge arm, and to be honest with you, he's bigger than most of the guys trying to tackle him. Malik Hornsby is just the opposite. He is uh, more elusive, a running quarterback, but he can throw the ball as well. I-, I am fascinated by the whole Texas State thing. Turning over more than half the roster, probably going to be more by the time... It all starts, right? I mean, camp starts this week. We'll see if we get G.J. Kinney on, you know, the podcast, see if they added any any more. It was, right, wasn't it uh, 37 transfers, 14 freshmen? That's 51 new players. Getting to know everybody real fast. Uh, old to you, getting the O.C. from Fordham and the backup quarterback from Fordham. Can they... They need a win in the worst of ways. They need a win. You don't want to go south right away, right? I mean, I don't know if they can pull off the upset. And it will be an upset, depending on what happens in week one. I mean, what happens if ODU plays well at Virginia Tech and, you know, the Cajuns, you know, take care of business against Northwestern State? You know, I mean, Cajuns will be, I don't know. I would be shocked if they're a touchdown favorite, but they'll be three point fit three or four point favorites. What happens if ODU takes them down, loses to Wake at home, although that may not be a sure bet either, right? Wake's breaking in a new quarterback. But then they end up, you know, against Commerce, and now all of a sudden they're two and two. Can they ride that wave uh, and not, you know, go into another six-game losing streak? Because, I, you know, if you're honestly talking about it, you know, ODU is staring at a nine-game losing streak. Virginia Tech, the Cajuns, and Wake, regardless if those last two ball games are home or not. They are looking at, you know, they're looking at a long losing streak. And can Ricky Ronnie, you know, um, you know, avoid that? And even if they get that, can you turn it around after that? Because although the schedule is not going to be easy, right? You got to play JMU. You got to play App. You got to play Marshall. And you got to play coastal. So the Easter's not easy. But boy, if you can hang or either beat one of those three football teams, your team's got to get confidence, right? Your team has to get confidence. And so that's what I'm interested in. Uh, not only the favorites, because again, we will be talking about them. They will be the majority of our discussion once the season starts. We'll preview all of the teams. But it's tough to talk about teams that are, you know, not contending for a spot in the in the Sun Belt you know, championship game or, you know, even going bowling. So I want to talk about, you know, some of the teams that, uh, you know, are looking to turn things around. All right. So we will do more of that next. I do need to tell you, and this is a great time. I mean, baseball's really done a good job uh, as of late. I mean, it is. We've been talking about Otani on Sports Talk forever. So let's talk a little bit about FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20, and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to go 
who you think is going to be is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official uh, partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. All right, so more quarterbacks that it is interesting because he's the one that has said, we know Cam Fancher is ready to go in Marshall, but, you know, Clay Helton had said, if the schedule is going to start today, we're going with Davis Britton. And he said that coming out of spring ball. We had him on the podcast. And he has not wavered from that heading into fall camp, uh, if you will, that it will be Georgia Southern. So he's had, you know, it would be, this is his second season. But remember, he had a different kind of entrance into the program, right? He got hired in like November. So while the football season is still going on, you know, he can hit that ground running by the time you get recruiting and. You know, maybe that's how you end up with Kyle Van Trees, and you're not scurrying is the wrong word, but, you know, trying to move your family and trying to find a coaching staff. He was a little bit ahead of the game. And so now we're looking if Georgia Southern can do what Kyle Van Trees did, but without the interceptions. And we're looking at Davis Brin. He's got a couple of years of eligibility. And we talked with uh, Khalib Hood, wide receiver, who came back. We talked to him at Sunbelt Media Day. Let me see if we got our stats on Khalib Hood because he's setting all kinds of records. Let's see what his stats are because, remember, Georgia Southern is not <laughs> not known for throwing uh, the football. So he's had, he had more catches last year than he had in his first three seasons. Eight catches his first season, 15 catches his second season, 41 catches in 21 when they tried to change up the offense a little bit, but 87 catches for 925 yards. I mean, oh, there you go. That's a back spasm right there. (laughs) Got a little bit too excited about Khalib Hood. Uh, But you would look for, again, more another big season for Khalib Hood. And, you know, if he can get on the same page, as Davis Brin, and maybe, I don't know if, I guess Khalid could be there for two more years if he wanted to be, right? I mean, right, that's what we're looking at. Uh, yeah, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, he actually can come back for another year if he wants to uh, and play more college football. And so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to is, is the surprise team because I, I just don't know who it's going to be. That's why it's a surprise, <laughs> right? I, I do not know who it's going to be. Um, I am a little bit concerned that maybe the Cajuns in the wrong direction. That is, you know, so be, there'll be a surprise team, and I guess it could be South Alabama, right? I, I'm talking, you know, guns blazing for South Alabama, but they, you know, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility they lose to Tulane. They lose to Oklahoma. So, so uh, I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, and I'm hoping the Cajuns aren't, aren't you know, the surprise the other way either. Maybe Troy could be, I mean, it's kind of sad if you're going to say Troy could be the surprise going in the wrong direction, but that would be only if they lose two Sunbelt games. They would be, you know, they would be, you know, that, that way. And I'm, I'm, I don't think that's out of the po- realm of possibility, but I don't think that would be a surprise other than that they were picked by the coaches to be uh, number one in the division. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for who's going to be the surprise. Is it Texas State, Arkansas State, ULM, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, ODU? Right, we got – actually, so there's six teams that could be a surprise for the positive. I think you got four teams in each division that are pretty good. Right, JMU, App, Coastal, and Marshall. 
And is Coastal getting a little bit dissed here? Is it because of Tim Beck? Marshall kind of getting a little dissed as well. And maybe they don't want to do the same thing they did twice because JMU kind of pummeled most of the teams last year in the Sun Belt. It's a little bit interesting um, that JMU was picked first without their quarterback. App State doesn't have a quarterback. And the three-time, we did this in the last episode, the three-time Sun Belt player of the year, his team, was being picked to finish third. That's a little that's a little bit strange. All right. So that's what I'm looking forward to, seeing who the surprise team is, right? Because it would be be fascinating to see if Texas State and ODU are surprise teams this year. Putting up a lot of points. They're a lot of fun. They're not going to be boring. I would presume they're going to be a little r- bit risky on defense as they are on offense. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, as well. Let me see the other quarterbacks I had here. Um, we did Southern Miss. We did Georgia Southern. I thought I had somebody else. Well, Darren Granger. I don't think that's going to be a surprise, though. I think Darren Granger is going to be good. How good he is and how much he can lift his team is going to determine on how much, you know, Georgia State can, can go this year. Uh, Sean Elliott. I'm going to mess that up all year long. Sean Elliott is with Georgia State. Sean Clark. With App State. Sean Elliott, the head coach, said they did a 180. They they did not like the direction of the program. They need to figure out what went wrong. They got a whole new attitude, whole new strength and conditioning coach. Uh, Darren Granger's put on a few pounds of muscle. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him and hearing how he's doing in camp. I think we're gonna we're bound to see one surprise. Last year was South. I think South was, was finished to pick third last year and finished second in the division. But I think, you know, I mean, they were, what were they? Six points away from being perfect in the season, in the regular season. They got crushed by Western Kentucky in the bowl game, but they lose to UCLA by two and Troy by four. So they weren't too far away from having a spectacular season. They won a bunch of close games. Admittedly, they won a bunch of close games. Cajuns, Southern Miss had to come from behind against Georgia Southern. So they had to hold off some teams, but uh, they were, they, they were a little bit of a surprise. I don't think anybody, they never won 10 before. So that was a little bit of a surprise. All right. When we come back, we will wrap things up. It is the race to 500 on locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. All right. Again, not those are special thanks. I mean, again, a hundred subscribers in the month of July. That's unbelievable. We only had 12 episodes, this being the 12th. Thank you so much. Um, We're just really getting going. Uh, We'll be doing, uh, we'll get all the coaches, hopefully. We'll get some media members on. We'll see if we can even get some players on, right? Because although there is the conference uh, podcast, which is great too, uh, but, you know, anyone, anytime that the Sun Belt can get some publicity, you would think they, they could take it. So, uh, all the SIDs were fantastic at Sunbelt Media Days and really looking forward to uh, the season. And thanks to our watchers and listeners uh, who have continued to build the uh, the podcast. We're looking to get to 500 by September 2nd. That's another 100. Hopefully we'll get to 400 by the end of the day. And then we got 31 to three days. That's three subscribers a day. We could do that. Three subscribers a day. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Let's go. All right. Uh, we'll have a good. We'll have a good lockdown Sun Belt throughout the football season, as long as the back gets into shape sometime in the next couple of days. Ow, my back hurts. Uh, all right. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. All right. Also, if you can share it, that would be great. Uh, don't forget, you can also wherever you get your audio podcast. Let's not forget that Amazon. Spotify, Stitcher's going away. You can do, uh, it's Apple Podcasts, iHeart, wherever you get your podcasts from, just search I or just search uh, Locked On Sunbelt and uh, you will find the podcast. All right, let's wrap things up with the race for 500. As we said, we only need like three, plus one, three subscribers a day. And we're going to start doing these every day again. Um, if we can preview all of the coaches and, you know, all, that's 14 episodes, right? Then we get media members and that's two more episodes. That's another 14. And we're all set for the month of 
uh, oh, I guess 20, 28 episodes, probably have some bonus episodes. Uh, so uh, looking forward to that. And it, it is a big help. Um, again, the, the more subscribers we have, the more other people take it as a legitimate podcast, I guess, sad to say, but that's the case. And really do, really do appreciate. We had, we had the most comments about where the Sunbelt is going to expand in any podcast. That may be, in fact, that may be as sad as that is the most comments we've had combined period. So that was great. I appreciate the back and forth. People do want to go to Florida. I understand why I do understand why I'm not sure the FIU is a great fit uh, anymore. The, the rationale why they want to be in Florida makes absolute sense. I'm just not sure it matters to the powers to be um, in the Sun Belt. Uh, but we will get to 500. Again, it will be 33 days. Today is the 31st, right? We're wrapping up the month of July. So maybe I'll need, ooh, there's the back again. Maybe I'll need less than, uh, a less than 100 to get to 500 by September 2nd. So it is all because of you guys. Really appreciate that. We will send out prizes. Could just do random. Just pick out a random listener and send out a prize, uh, which will be a T-shirt. It'll look a lot like that banner up there. Or we could maybe, well, it'll, it'll have to look like that. I'd have to get somebody maybe to do it in school colors if you wanted to do that. That's not the worst of all ideas. All right. Uh, so the coaches uh, we do have right now, knocking on wood, we do have Marshall head coach, Charles Huff. He will be on Tuesday. We have Coach Ricky Ronnie from ODU. He'll be on Wednesday. And Mike Desimo, head coach of the Cajuns, will be on Thursday. So we will preview those camps, as I believe they're all opening up on Wednesday. So we will talk to them uh, and have them on locked on Sunbelt this week, as long as I can get from the bed to the desk with the bad back uh we're doing okay all right uh all right so we'll be back again on tuesday it should be uh marshall thundering herd head coach charles huff joining us until then have a great week everybody thanks so much for tuning in you've been watching locked on sunbelt your team every day 